After two years spent mourning the death of his wife and growing increasingly resentful of his throne, Merrick received an unusual request for an audience from the commander of the Grey Wardens of Orlais, Genevieve. Unusual because the Grey Wardens had been banished from Ferelden centuries earlier for leading a revolt against the crown. Genevieve arrived with six other Grey Wardens. Kel, an Avar hunter from the Frostbacks, Utha, a silent sister from Orzammar, Julian and Nicholas, a pair of Orlesian warriors, Fiona, a mage from the circle of Montsimard, and a young thief named Duncan, who had been inducted into the Order only a few months prior. They were looking for the previous commander, Genevieve's brother Bregan, who had been captured by Darkspawn in the Deep Roads. This revealed to Genevieve through dreams, though she did not initially reveal that to Merrick. The Darkspawn capturing a Grey Warden instead of killing them outright was unheard of. What's worse, Bregan was one of several Grey Wardens who knew the location of the Old Gods. With that information, the Darkspawn could find one of the Old Gods and corrupt it into an Arc Demon, triggering a Blight, a massive invasion of Darkspawn onto the surface lands. They knew that Bregan had been to Orton Taig, but they did not know how to get there. Old maps were unreliable. Genevieve learned from the Shaperit in Orzammar that Marek and Loghain were the only two living people to have visited the Taig. They had hoped Taren Loghain would act as their guide, but he refused them and suggested the Orlesian Wardens might attempt to assassinate him. To everyone's shock, however, King Marek volunteered himself. Loghain objected and called his king an idiot, but Merrick revealed that the witch the two of them had met almost 14 years ago had told him a blight would come to Ferelden. Even so, Merrick pretended to cave to Loghain before sneaking away from the capital with the Wardens. Genevieve assigned Duncan to look after the king. Merrick got along well with the young Warden, but Fiona in particular treated him with hostility. Before entering the Deep Roads, Marek and the Wardens went to Ferelden's Circle of Magi, where the first enchanted Ramil gave them enchanted onyx brooches that would hide the Wardens from the Darkspawn, and a potion that would give Marek temporary resistance to the Blight. Duncan, being rather bored with the ceremony, slipped away and broke into the first enchanter's chambers, stealing a strange black dagger. Marek led the Wardens to the same deep roads entrance he had used years ago, south of West Hill. The tunnels had changed in the intervening years, the darkspawn corruption had spread, but Marek was able to bond with the Wardens over a flask of dwarven ale given to him by King Endrin of Orzammar, which was not actually ale, but a vile concoction created from fungus. Of course, it was only a matter of time until they encountered the darkspawn. They narrowly fought their way out of a swarm of the creatures, only to find a cavern housing a high dragon. Genevieve refused to allow the Grey Wardens to retreat, and insisted they press on. They slew the beast, but Julian was killed while saving Duncan. They pressed on, eventually finding their way to Orton Taig, where they found evidence that Bregan had been there. Searching for where he had gone, the Wardens and Marek explored an ancient dwarven palace filled with long-dead bodies. In the throne room, they stumbled upon a spirit that trapped them in the Fade and turned Fiona into an abomination, as it attempted to possess her. Marek found himself in a dream. It was a world where Catriel had lived and become his queen, where Rowan had married Loghain and had not died. Marek was sorely tempted to stay, but he remembered the gruesome sight of Fiona's transformation and knew he had to help her. He left his dream and helped free the Wardens from their own prisons, all save Nicholas, who chose to stay in his dream where Julian was alive. Fiona had instead been trapped in a nightmare of her own past. She had been sold to a cruel Orlesian noble as a child and routinely tortured by him. Now the demon took on that role as it sought to break her will. Marek and the others helped free her, and he was ultimately able to behead the demon, sending all but Nicholas back to the waking world. Marek and Fiona grew closer after their experience in the Fade, and they spent the night together in the tunnels. The Grey Wardens argued about whether they should turn back, 
leading to a scuffle that revealed patches of mottled flesh on all the wardens save Duncan and Fiona, signs of the darkspawn corruption advancing far faster than it should have been. When the group awoke, they found that Genevieve had left them in the night. In pursuing her, they were cornered by Darkspawn, but were unexpectedly saved and captured by a mysterious Darkspawn like none they had ever seen, the Architect. He confronted them with Bregan and Genevieve, both of whom had suffered extremely accelerated corruption, their hair missing, eyes red, and all their skin mottled. They had become inhuman ghouls, but surprisingly retained a sense of themselves. Genevieve explained that the Architect had a plan to end the threat of the Blight forever by advancing the Grey Warden's corruption to the point where the Darkspawn could not distinguish them from other Darkspawn. They could then travel freely to the prisons of the Old Gods and kill them before they could be corrupted into Arc Demons. They asked the other Wardens to join them. Utha volunteered immediately, but the others refused. The Architect left them in their cell, hoping they would change their minds, but instead Duncan was able to break them out. Kel sacrificed himself to distract the Darkspawn while the others made for the surface. Of the original party of eight, only Marek, Duncan, and Fiona remained. They emerged from the deep roads near Lake Callanhad, and were surprised to be met by First Enchanter Ramil, only for him to paralyze and capture them. Ramil had allied with the Architect to learn the secrets of his Blight magic, his followers seized control of the Circle. There, Merrick and the others encountered the Architect and the Corrupted Wardens again, who revealed that the brooches they thought protected them from the Darkspawn senses actually accelerated their corruption, although the dagger Duncan had stolen had actually protected him from these effects. The Architect once again attempted to convince Duncan and Fiona to join him, and Ramil spoke of making a gift of Merrick to Emperor Florian of Orlais. However, Bregan accidentally revealed that there would not be much left of Orlais or any other nation with the second phase of the Architect's plan. They intended to infect the water supply of major cities with the Blight, thus killing much of the population and turning the survivors into Grey Wardens so they could safely live alongside Darkspawn. Genevieve had not known about this plan and was horrified. She turned against her brother and was immediately killed by the Architect. Angered by his callous killing of his sister, Bregan also turned against the Architect and cut off the Darkspawn's hand. First Enchanter Ramil attacked them both, revealing that he had no intention of carrying out the Darkspawn's plan. He had only ever been interested in using the Architect's knowledge to enhance his own power and using Marek to gain favor with the Orlesian Emperor. Meanwhile, Loghain had been watching the Circle Tower ever since he discovered Marek's disappearance believing that the Orlesian First Enchanter and the Wardens would inevitably attempt to betray Marek. When Ramil seized control of the tower, he had immediately deployed the royal army to attack. Their captors distracted by their own infighting and the approaching royal army, Duncan was able to free them from their bonds and together with Bregan they killed the First Enchanter. The Architect and Utha escaped in the fighting. Bregan asked to be killed and was executed by the Ferelden soldiers. In the following year, Fiona and Duncan went to Weishaupt Fortress, the headquarters of the Order and the Anderfels, to report on the incident. Marek returned to Denerim with a renewed confidence and set about his duties as king. As one of his first orders of business, he allowed the Grey Wardens back into Ferelden after two centuries of exile. Duncan and Fiona returned to Denerim with several surprises for him the least of which that Duncan had been named second-in-command of the reformed Grey Wardens of Ferelden. Fiona revealed that by some freak of magic, the corruption-accelerating effects of the Onyx brooches had been more than reversed. She was free of the Blight entirely. She also brought with her a child, one they had conceived together in the Deep Roads. She was being recalled to Weishaupt, and it was customary that Grey Wardens give up their children, more, she did not want their son to face the stigma of being elf-blooded, nor did she want him to grow up as a rival to Kaelin in the royal life she knew Merrick found to be such a burden. So she asked Merrick to find the child a home away from all that. Merrick gave him to the care of his brother-in-law, Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. A story was prepared about the boy's mother being a maid in Redcliffe Castle, 
and he was named Alistair. Fiona departed, never to see Mark again. Duncan promised he would keep an eye on the boy and bring news of him to Mark. Mark continued to rule Ferelden, well loved by his people. In 920 Dragon, he'd made peace with the newly crowned Empress Selene of Orlais, officially ending the conflict between the two countries. But his reign ended suddenly in 925 Dragon, when he was lost at sea. His son Caelan succeeded him as king, though Loghain spent two years searching for his old friend, and he remained convinced for the rest of his life that Orlais had a hand in his disappearance. In actuality, Marek had been abducted by Antivan crows in the employ of Magister Aurelian Titus, a powerful Tevinter mage. Marek was imprisoned in the crow's prison, Villa Banchel, but then broken out by Yavanna, a witch of the wilds who asked him to fulfill the pledge he had made to Flemeth all those years ago. Marek had promised to use his blood, the blood of Kalanhad, who supposedly drank the blood of a great dragon, to awaken those ancient great dragons slumbering in the silent grove beneath the Telari swamps. Marek's blood awoke what Yavanna called the Queen of Dragons, but before he could awaken more, he was captured again by Aurelian Titus. Titus took him to a Tevinter fortress on Saharan called Ath Valanis, where Marek's blood was used in experiments by Titus and his dragon cult. Ultimately, he was attached to an artifact called the Magralin that extracted his blood and used its power to enhance Titus's abilities. There he would remain for years, until his son Alistair attacked Athvalanus with the Kunari in a bid to rescue him in 938 Dragon. Alistair's friend Varric shot the Magrallan, drawing the minds of all in the fortress into the Fade. Mark was cast into a dream with Alistair, where he had been raised as a prince. Mark helped Alistair realize he was in a dream, and together they helped stop Aurelian Titus. Titus was unable to harm Mark, since his blood powered the magic of the Magrallan, and Mark took his head, allowing Alistair and the others to wake. But Mark's body had wasted away in the real world, and the Magrallan was the only thing keeping him alive. Alistair destroyed the device and released his father. Thus passed King Marek the Savior, Ferelden's most beloved hero since Callanhad himself. Well, there you have it. The story of King Marek. You know, I think Marek might be the Dragon Age character that features in the most stories, so it was interesting to try and boil that down. The Stolen Throne was the big one. Anyway, I think I have a few more stories I can tell about Ferelden. You'll see that next week. As always, let me know what sort of topics you want to see or improvements I can make in my videos. See you next time.